hi guys, welcome. We are so excited. We actually just did planning together recently. So this is super timely for us to share that with you. And I really wanted to share it with Megan because what is so important to me about that is like, especially as you're growing your business, um, especially as you're, um, you know, really like growing your team, like you can't plan by yourself, <laughs> right? Like your team is intrinsically part of the plan. Even with a lot of my clients, like we plan together and then they take it to their team and do a planning session with their team too, or they bring their team to one of our calls or whatever. So I think that's just really important. And one of the reasons I really wanted Megan to be here is because I think sometimes we tend to like do that in a vacuum. And then we're like, oh, but there are all these people that like need to know and need to support me on that and like need to execute the process. So excited you're here to have this conversation with us. Yeah, I'm super excited. I feel like it's it's just kind of one of those things where I feel like so often when we think about planning, we do think of the more like big picture, like visionary types of things. And so I think that it'll be just kind of fun to, to talk about how we talk through that and do that kind of planning, but also some of the more like logistical pieces of, you know, executing that and making that happen and planning for it on more of like the back end type of thing. For sure, for sure. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Tristan. Hi, Michelle. So happy you guys are here. Um, if you have questions, obviously ask Megan. No, <laughs> um, <laughs> but seriously, if you have questions, let us know. Specific questions. Megan loves a specific question. Actually, so do I, but you really love a specific yeah. question. Um, so if you have specific questions as we're going, just let us know. If you guys don't know, Megan is my COO. I feel like everybody probably knows that. Um, she's operating officer, so that's why she's here to help us with this. Um, okay, so let's get started. First thing, hi, Sherry. Um, hey, Kristen. Oh, I'm so happy you guys are all here. This makes me so happy. Who has planning questions? Like, maybe we'll just... Yeah. Let's do That'd be fun. Um, okay, so I feel like one of the first things that I think is really important and that I feel like we do pretty differently at A Lit Up Life than um, maybe a lot of, like, traditional planning teaches is that we really try to solve problems, right? So you think like what a lot of, hey Jen, what a lot of, um, I'm so happy you guys, thanks for being here. Um, what I feel like a lot of traditional planning does is it's sort of like, okay, here's the goal, get the goal, whatever. And what we do, and obviously we've been in business a little bit longer. So, you know, if like you're in year one, this might be a little bit harder, although you definitely still have problems to solve, is we try to ask that question of like, what problems do we need to solve in our business next year? Like what's going on right now? What do we need to look at? We had two very specific um, problems to solve for 2021. And so a lot of our um, planning session was around how to do that, how to focus on those. So it's not just like that big goal. It's like, what are the two things we like need to solve? Um, and so one of those... <laughs> I feel like we're going to be assholes, Megan, because uh, we, <laughs> we can't, we're not sharing some of it because I haven't told everyone yet. Uh, I haven't told my clients yet. It's nothing bad. If you're my client, it's going to be great. Nothing. It's, bad. Yeah. <laughs> it's all good it. stuff. <laughs> yeah. But um, like there was one client issue that I really wanted to solve. And so like, that was what we were coming up with or, um, you know, one of the other things to solve is like, how am I serving more of you guys? We have a super long wait list right now and I can't fit everyone in. And so that was another problem to solve coming at you with some of that too. But again, we can't really share. So it's a little bit harder to say, but like, do you see how that makes a difference when it's like, here are two problems. Like, what are we doing to solve those is so much more effective sometimes than being like, oh, I have a goal of hitting whatever, a million, how do I work backward from that? Like that can be really effective, but like if I solve those two problems, I'm well on my way there. So for you and your business, it might be like, oh, I have like a conversion problem. Cool. Instead of setting the goal, that's just like, you know, whatever, hit 20K months, like I would make the goal, how do I solve this conversion problem? Because that is actually what gets you to 20K months. So just kind of a slightly different way that we look at things. Megan, do you want to 
um, like share about that from your perspective and why that makes it easier for execution too. I mean, like for me, I don't know if this is just like a personality thing, <laughs> but I sure, love to you to hear all the woo woo tips. I really like that. Okay. We'll give you, yeah. woo. we got woo. I feel like for me, um, being in more of like the operation side of things and being in like having the, like my brain works in like, how does this happen? What do we like, what are we like, how are we making this like come to life type of thing? And so it is really helpful, especially in that team capacity. And when you're planning with your team to talk about like solving those problems and identifying what what they are and then talking through like how do we how do we figure this out I think that that it's super uh good to have somebody else whether that's a coach in your your team or some type of combo like all like everyone talking Mm -hmm. through some of those problems and then being able to identify them and work through them because I just think that it allows for more like different perspectives and different ideas and different ways of thinking around different things like that and so I found that to just be, I have found that to just be really um, just a good way that we can really collaborate in that sense. Because I think a lot of people don't really know how to bring their team into planning as much because, you know, sometimes that can, especially if it's like, you know, you just have like you don't have a COO, but you have a VA or a couple of VAs or, or something like that, where yeah. I think that just bringing them in to say like, hey, here's here's what I'm seeing as an issue that we need to talk through and kind of to create a, a solution around. Let's talk through how we make that happen. For sure. And actually, Megan and I have done a few recently um, similar meetings mm-hmm. with some of my clients and their team. Um and that's kind of what we go in asking them. We're like, what, like, what's the problem we're here to solve kind of, which is like more important to us in some ways than what's the goal. Because like, we already know the goal for the most part, but like, if we don't know what problem is keeping us from that goal, it's really hard. Like, I feel like a lot of people will just kind of be like, okay, my goal is 500K. If I draw it out, it looks like this many clients in this program, this many clients in this program, this many clients in this program okay, cool. But like, why don't you have that many clients now? And what problem are we solving for that? Because that's what actually gets you there. So paying attention to that is really important. And then cluing your team in on that. Like, it's so important that my team knows, like, here are the top two problems we're solving for a lit up life for 2021, because that helps them think about it in a different way. Like if I was just like, oh, we just have this income goal, they'd be like, rock on cool but they wouldn't really be able to like contribute in a really specific way to that um so that just makes all the difference in the world in terms of like getting that specific and if you don't know what problems you have to solve that's your problem (laughs) right like we need to know those things in our business and I don't even mean like problem has to be this like awful thing like the two problems we're solving in a little life are like how can we do something great for our clients and how can we um, serve you better? It's not like they're these like eating away at us problems. So there are still things we have to think about and have to solve for, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Tristan said, super secret client thing we can't say. No, I didn't (laughs) just have a heart attack. I just have something in my eye. It is really not a big thing at all. Do not worry. Not like nothing is changing except nothing, literally basically, right? That's fair to say, Megan. Yeah, that's fair to say. Nothing's changing. Nothing's changing. Cool. Um, That was funny though. Uh, Okay. So do you know what your problems are to solve and are you goal setting slash sales planning around those? That will make such a freaking difference and it will help your team support you so much more. Um, Next thing, everyone's going to hate this one. (laughs) <laughs> we try to be really reasonable about what we add. Nobody likes that because everyone wants to like add all the things. And I hear you. I'm snapping so much lately. I've noticed this. In yeah, I noticed first. that you-, yeah, you guys all the time. I'm just like in a vibe. Lately. In a group, like, yeah. yeah. Okay. I got to stop. I'm going to sit on them. Um, but everyone wants to like move super fast, but the truth is like that it's really hard to execute something super well, especially if you have like 
a bigger team or especially if you have a way small team. Do you know what I mean? Like with your big team there, oh my God, now I got my false stuck. With a big team, there are a lot of moving parts. So we need time to do that really well with a small team. Like there's only a couple of you. And so you can only do so much while you're still actually doing the work that makes you money, like serving the clients and things like that. So typically at a lit up life, we have a rule that we only add one thing a year. I know everyone's probably like, (laughs) right. But from my perspective, that helps me be so diligent and focused on the thing that I'm adding. Like the year we added, literally, that's all we did. But I was able to like really pour my energy into that. Or like one year we added retreats. One year we added a mastermind. Like, and so it really helps me like fully cement and pour my energy into that and then add the next year. Um, and listen, this is like our rule. It doesn't mean you can't ever have two or whatever. But if you're talking like three, four, five initiatives you're trying to push forward in a year, it's going to feel tough and they're all going to feel a little messier. So um, that one is really important to us. We already have decided what ours is for this year. We've already been able to like plan around that. We know what that looks like um, through the lens of like an entire year kind of thing. Um, And for me, it helps so I can pour my creativity into that thing. Like, I think when people hear that, they're like, but I'm a creative. I have so many ideas. I'm like, cool. Like in that direction, like you can have a million ideas, you can have a million content ideas, but like, you know, are you putting them toward that thing or toward the thing you already have? Like, I think sometimes we think creative only means new program or something. And I think it can mean like amazing content to support this new program or like, amazing add-ons within a current program or whatever. So that's sort of my take. Again, that doesn't have to be your rule, but I've found it to be very useful. And I'm pretty sure you dig that as well. (laughs) I for sure do. Yes. I think that like from a team's perspective, like the more that you're kind of focusing on one thing at a time, even if you have multiple things in a year, but as long as you're working on one thing, building one thing and adding one thing at a time, that allows the team's full energy and focus to be in that. Then, then you're more likely to get things done on time and to have, you know, deadlines met and to have like all the moving pieces kind of working together and in a like a smoother way rather than feeling super just disjointed because, oh, I had to do this on this thing, but then this other project, we had to jump over here to work on this a little bit and then jump back over here. And I feel like there's just a lot of, like you're, you're just dividing your attention. And so ultimately what happens a lot of the time is that if you're working on too many things at once, everything slows down, right? Yeah. Because you're, you're spread across too many things. And so if you're just focusing on one thing, I think that that's what allows that to just really like you, you can put your creative energy fully into that and team can put all of their focus and execution hours into it too. So it just moves everything along a lot faster, I think. Tristan said earth years. Yes, earth years. However, I think to Megan's point, it doesn't mean like, like something else we're doing next year that it's not part of this is like, we're launching a new website. Mm-hmm. We have a new website that's being built. We have all new copy, whatever, like great. That, but like, that's like the side thing as it relates to this bigger thing. So it's like, we have this bigger focus. We're still filling one-on-one. We're still, you know, filling our mastermind. We're still serving our clients. We're still putting out amazing content. We're still running two podcasts. Like, so it doesn't mean that you're not still like doing amazing things or moving other things forward. It's just so clear for you and team. Like, this is the one thing I want to see lift off on this year. I want to see like us putting our energy and attention into, um, that helps them so much in terms of like processes, decision-making, planning, all that kind of stuff. Um, The thing that we're working on is going to happen, I think, and start happening in Feb. Megan's already started to put those processes into place. So it's like, we're three months out. Is that right? No, two months out. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, like a month and a half. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Um, But like that, like knowing that and then having team be able to go, oh, okay. So like, this is it. This is the thing we're starting to plan now is 
so, so useful um, versus like, if it's like, hey guys, like I think this is what a lot of people do with their team, unfortunately. It's like, hey guys, we have these like five big initiatives this year. It's this, 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 cool. Like everyone got excited about it. Like so amazing, go. And then team's like, <laughs> okay, what, like in what direction, right? So that is why like the one thing and like maybe your one thing doesn't take a full year, you know, for me, like literally was going to be an eight, eight month plus process. Cause it's six months plus of recordings. Plus, uh, we had a launch plan, whatever this thing I'm putting into place is going to be at least a six month process. Like, so like that fits that may not fit for you. Like if you're doing something that's like a one month thing, like of course you might have multiple things, but if you can keep that clarity for yourself and your team, it's so useful. Um, <laughs> not at all curious what it is now, says Kristen. <laughs> <laughs> I promise. Um, okay, so, and then I would also like, I put the term reasonable in there and I feel like most entrepreneurs in our space hate that term because we want to be like about what's not reasonable about pushing our limits, that kind of thing. And I hear you and I get you, but I find that it's much easier to do that. If I have like a reasonable ad, that's when I can like take off with something. If I like try to like stretch my limits to the unreasonable in terms of like things I think I'm going to get done, it's just stressful for me. And it's stressful for the team. Like if we make a reasonable plan and then there's ads on top of that not ads as in like paid ads like add-ons on top of that but like 2020 was a great freaking example we had a reasonable plan and so we were able to pivot really fast when all those things happened if we had like pushed ourselves to the edge of that when all of that happened i can't like we would have just not been able to handle it right megan's like scarred <laughs> i am i think it's rough <laughs> but but i think that like i i think that that's so true i feel like there's even you know 2020 aside yeah. in normal times no matter what a project is there's always going to be more involved than what you expect and so mm -hmm. if you can almost like keep that in mind and that can almost be like, I feel like even the most reasonable plans sometimes still feel like very, like very aggressive timelines sometimes because there's so much more into it that you don't really realize until you're in it. So I think that just really giving yourself a little bit of space around that is really smart because then you and the team can just kind of operate in a, a much you know, more easeful way where you can really like dig into something and put your full energy into it. For sure. For sure. Um, okay. So next thing is we look at what's already working and like already converting and we always try to throw fuel on that fire. So I think this is another thing that like we almost, uh, sorry, my computer's like trying to update. Hold on. <laughs> there we go. Um, this is another thing that I think we don't talk about enough in terms of planning in this space is like are you like just doing a lot more of what's working? Is that part of your plan? Because I feel like sometimes what happens in business and in entrepreneurship is like something's working. So we're quick to discount it and be like, what else, what else, what else? Instead of being like, oh, it works really well when we do this. Like, how about we just do this a whole lot more? Um, so that's like always stuff I'm asking my clients, like, well, what's working? Like, what are people converting off of? Like, what is the thing? And then how do we like keep stacking the deck on that? Um, and so that's a big part of our planning process is to be like, okay, like this one thing is working really well. Like, uh, something that, um, we were talking about is like, we have this one particular type of content that is converting super, super well. So we were like, well, what's the plan for doing more of that? What's the plan for uh, creating more of that? And then create the plan from there. But it's such a simple way to plan because you're just like, how do I just keep doing what's working? And I feel like so many business owners resist that. Do you think that's true, Megan? Yeah, I think that, yeah. um, I think a lot of people just are constantly like feeling like what's next, what's next what's and next? add more <laughs> new things and stuff. And I think that like a lot of the time, 
adding more and adding new things can be on the things that are already working. Just yeah. like you're saying, like just expanding on it. How can we just like throw fire on this and, and, you know, just make it an even, you know, more impactful thing. Cause I think a lot of times too, that often is what lays the foundation for you to add new things, like totally new, like projects and launches and programs and stuff on top. When you have something that's like, we've talked a lot about like running a well-oiled machine and stuff. And so yeah. that's what creates the well-oiled machine so that you can, you know, explore other programs or projects or whatever it is. For sure. And I think that it doesn't mean it has to look exactly the same. Like one, um, one thing that I'll give as an example is like, when we added literally, it was because what was working was anytime I got on a call with someone, they were converting. Like if someone was coached by me or heard me coach, they were converting kind of thing. Right. So that then like, obviously literally it was like a different beast, but it was still off this same idea where that works. So if I put all this time, energy, and money into a podcast, I can be reasonably sure that that's going to convert too. So that's something to really think about. Like the next thing you're doing this year, can you be reasonably sure it's going to work based on what's already working, what's already converting? Um, and knowing the answer to that is so useful because it gives you a frame to think about things through. Again, we're so often planning just on the money goal and it's not the best frame sometimes because it's so arbitrary and it's so like not specifically guiding you in a direction. It's just like, oh, okay, I think I need to get 50 people in this one program, hundred people in here, but like, and what, like what's working to do that? What's already getting people in that program? So really helpful to be able to ask yourself that. Sherry says, yes, I love doing this on the client experience side. Totally, totally. Um, and so then the next question from there, I'll recap these questions, don't worry, is like, what's simplest here? <laughs> I personally have to work on this a lot because my brain always goes to like the more, uh, big or dramatic thing. And so I've had to really train myself to be like, nope, what's simplest? Nope, what's simplest? Um, one of the, everyone's going to hate me, the client thing that we have coming, which don't worry, is changing nothing. Like initially did not look how it's going to look in my brain. It looked much more complicated. <laughs> and Megan and I just had to talk through what's simpler than that. What's simpler than that? What's simpler than that? Right. Um, and so just like staying in something enough to ask that question, I feel like, again, sometimes when we're planning and goal setting, we're like, okay, this is the thing I'm going to do. Okay, cool. What's next? What's next? What's next? Instead of like, okay, this is the thing I'm going to do. Stop, drop. And what is the way that it could be simpler here? And I think like that obviously serves team too. So feel free to share on that again. For sure. Well, I think that obviously like simpler things are, are clear. Like, I think that your communication and, and direction around something can be clearer in that sense. You can, uh -huh. um, you know, explain the, the goal, the process, all of that a lot more simply, but also there are going to be less crazy pieces, especially if it's something new. I almost think okay. it's better to just at least start simply if it's something new. And then you can always add on, you can always expand, you can always yeah. like change it up, whatever, but it's really hard to like start with something really complex and like pull back and pull pieces away or like, like mid launch be like, Oh, we're scrapping this and we're scrapping this and all of that. Right. I think it's just yeah. a lot easier to like build on top of things rather than like pull back in them. So I think that it is a lot simpler for team. And I think that it allows you to really like hone in on what is the thing that's going to make the impact here. Mm -hmm. And not just adding things just to add them. Cause I think that we can like do that very easily. Just be like, oh, and this, and this, and more, and more. And I think that just like asking like what's simplest yeah. really makes it very, like makes it so that you're super focused on like, what is the actual thing that can achieve the goal that we're, that we're after here? Totally. And like a great question that I ask clients a lot is like, well, what's the essence of what you want? And I think that's what you're saying. Like, yeah. so it's like, if the essence is like, you're just wanting to like connect more with your audience or something like that. Cool. Do you need to jump through 32 hoops to do that? Or is there like a simple way to still hit on that essence? Right. And so I think that that's really helpful just from like 
our perspective, in case this is relevant for anyone here, we're at a point in business where we could add a million things, mm-hmm. right? Um, but the question that we're sitting with a lot right now is what's the expenditure to do that versus what's the income upside? And that's such an important question because we're full right now. So like I could think of a hundred things to do, but like they're like, it's always an expense now. It's really never um, necessarily an income bump. Like my income is going to continue to grow in terms of like client revenue share, all those kind of things. But like a lot of the things I tend to think of, (laughs) Megan knows this, are just expenses. Like, I'm like, we should also serve people in this way. And we should also serve people in this way. And so a frame that we're have to, we have to sit with a lot is like, where are expenses that feel good around just paying to serve more? That's great. Like my holiday giveaway, check that out. Um, no, really it's the pin post and you should check it out. But like, that is like a worthwhile expenditure to like, thank you guys and serve you guys. But a lot of the other things I can come up with, it's like, like from a business perspective, that doesn't really make sense. And so that's something I wanted to share because I feel like um, I am so about service, but but at the end of the day, like profit margin matters and I'm running a business that I want to be a successful and sustainable long-term. And so you should be looking at your profit margin and some of these decisions. What expenses are you agreeing to because it's a great idea versus because you can truly see expense income upside attached to it, right? Mm -hmm. Any thoughts on that, Megan? Well, I think that like part of it too is like, I think that um, like the more that you can add things that are income generating, the more that that ends up being things that are more sustainable for your team to continue to support you around, right? right? Where like, I think that what can happen is if you're just adding a bunch of things and it's not, and it's just like ideas that you're just executing on sometimes there's not really that like um a a deeper attachment in the team end where like it might be just I don't know like do you do you get what I'm saying where I think yeah there's almost like not as much safety there for them and there's not as much like connection to it because it's sort of like oh this thing is I'm just doing because Lacey had a fucking harebrained idea versus like oh I can see how this thing I'm doing is directly contributing to our business growth is directly so I feel secure in my position and I feel connected to that right totally and I think sometimes too it's like a lot of the times if somebody needs to like cut back on hours or shift you know shift gears on anything those are the types of things that tend to like fall to the wayside first and so sometimes it can get a little bit frustrating for team members to like start a project and then it just like never goes anywhere because it was just a, an idea and oh we don't really need it so we're not going to finish that one out and so I think that the more I mean obviously that just happens sometimes in business but I think that the more that you can you know have the things that your team is working on that really gets them like fully integrated into the business and into helping to grow the business the more like bought in they are in yeah. like the, the the business as a whole, right? For sure. I think that's so true. Um, Maggie says the essence for the win reminds me of the Creating Money book. Yes. If you guys haven't read that book, it's really good. It's called Creating Money. Um, Maggie says, loving this conversation this year. I launched a book, a podcast, and my first group program, but one by one. And next year is just refining both the podcast and the group. And I think that's true too. Like sometimes you have seasons where you build and then sometimes you have seasons where you refine, but like credit to you for being like next year is just a refinement year because I think that's what a lot of people won't do too is it always has to be like add, add, add. And so like for me, it's like I might add one thing a year for you. You might have added three things last or last year, this year, whatever. <laughs> but next year you're like, it's a refinement year. So I think that's like wise to pay attention to and see like you, it, it, you can't c- keep a pace of three things a year, three things a year, three things a year and create a lot of success and sustainability and all of that, nor can your team keep that pace, (laughs) right? Megan, like, go fine. Um, (laughs) So that's, I think that's super smart. And that's like a great lesson there too. 
Totally. I think that there's always going to be seasons, you know, and different years that are kind of more like super like growing building phases and then more of like just going through and like refining processes, cleaning up. Like I, I feel like a lot of people who grow really quickly, that happens a lot where you like do a lot, add a lot, create a lot, and then you take a break and you're like, all right, <laughs> we need to clean this shit up kind of thing. We literally just did that with one of my clients. She's grown super fast. And we kind of like all had to come together and be like, cool, cool. Like, how are we cleaning this up? Right. Yeah. We as in Megan and I and her team, Um, (laughs) I wasn't clear. Um, well, actually I was going to talk about something else first, which I'll come back to, but let me go to this since this is sort of relevant here and Sherry, this is some of the woo for you. Um, Maggie, you're also going to like this because I feel like it's very, um, you'll see. Anyway, one thing I really try to do is think about how I want to feel in my business each month. Mm -hmm. So like we're putting out something in February. What I'm probably going to feel in February is like excitement, motivation. Like I'll probably put a word on it like that. What I'm probably not going to feel is super peaceful super, super chill. I mean, like I kind of have like a, a baseline of peace. Don't get me wrong, but like where we can trip ourselves up is we're trying to get every single thing from our business all at once, all at the same time. So it's just like, we're saying there are years where you might build or seasons where you might build and then seasons where you might refine. Um, the same is true with like how your business is going to make you feel like there are months where I'm going to feel like super chill and peaceful next year. There are months where I'm going to feel like excited, energized, things like that. But if I want all of that in the same month, quarter, week, whatever, I will constantly be disappointed by my business. And I will always be making one aspect wrong or the other. And that month where I'm like energized and whatever, right? Like it's going to be so easy to be like, I wish I was feeling more chill right now. Or in the month where I'm really chill, it's going to be so easy to be like, oh, where's, why am I not more energized? What's going on? Like, so I really try to like, I have like a little Trello board and I literally write this out. <laughs> Megan laughing at me. Megan, like you I didn't know with this. your Trello I board. Know. <laughs> Look at you. I learned from the best. Um, <laughs> where I literally write this out because it keeps me in check mentally to be like, yeah, no, like you picked this, this month, this is what we do in here. Um, and I think like, that's so true. And the reason I said Maggie would like this, cause it's like the same thing with relationships. If you're trying to get every need met from a relationship all at once, you're screwed, right? You're always going to be disappointed and unhappy. So, um, that's just a really helpful piece for me. And I think it makes me Megan, not to put you on the spot, but you know, you can tell them. I think it makes me more chill with team in general because I'm like, no, I'm like, I chose to feel like this right now versus like, why do things feel crazy? Like what, uh," you know what I mean? Right. Mm. Yeah. I think that it kind of ties into like, um, I think that sometimes we can be in something and always feel like that's not where we're supposed to be, like always feel like we're supposed to be feeling something different. And so if like, there is a lot going on, I think that just having like reminding yourself like, oh, because I'm choosing that right now is a very energized like season in the business and we're doing a lot and we we have a lot that we're building. We're in that like building phase in, in that sense. And so like letting that be okay and stuff. And I think that a lot of times we just kind of like always think of like feeling like we should be more of whatever we're not feeling. Yep. hundred percent. Um, Belinda, don't worry. The client thing isn't February. The client thing is like this week, right? Megan? Yeah. Like Wednesday. Yeah, don't, fine. don't hold me to that. <laughs> not Wednesday. Like- Kidding. Um, but anyway, that's, you're good. Um, yes. Maggie says, how do you want to feel is a great question. Okay. Sherry has a good question. Do you always come from what you as the CEO's goal are and the biz challenges to solve, or do you also get team input around their passions or desires and play in different areas or projects? Um, not really. I mean, not <laughs> just to be transparent. Um, I feel like I have a super clear vision and I feel like that's my job. Like one of my favorite 
quotes on leadership is like Theodore Hesburgh. And he talks about like, you have, you can't blow an uncertain trumpet. Like you have to blow a certain trumpet as a leader. And so for me, I'm always open for like feedback, but I'm never really like, oh, like what's a passion project that you want? Cause I'm like, like, here's the direction that we're going. And I feel like that's sort of my job. And then like, certainly team has brought me ideas that we've said yes to or different things than that. But like, I think sometimes if it gets too vague, we lose that certain trumpet and that certain thing. Like I know a lot of life is here to serve our clients one-on-one -on -one really well and to serve our community really well. Like that, that is it for me. And so I think like that is super important to like blow that certain trumpet. And then I think we like put team in that way. Megan, you could speak to that too, but like that, that's sort of how I look at it. It's not like it doesn't matter, but it's just like, I feel like we have to be on the same track here. I think part of it with team is more like, like here's a thing that we're doing. Like when we launched literally, for example, yeah. we're launching literally, we're launching a podcast. And so bringing team into like, like almost like, hey, our content writer, like, hey, we're looking for this and this. Do you have ideas around yeah. like, you know, what kind of content can really support this or, so, you yeah. know, where it's like specific to a project. And then there's a little bit of like, you know, creative freedom around like, okay. like making that happen. But the, the actual project and the vision for that is already like that, that's you coming mm -hmm. to us saying like, this is what we're working on. And then like bringing team into the, the actual kind of like um, execution and how all of that comes together and who wants to, to step into different roles type of thing too. For sure. And that's something we try to be super chill around. Like it does, like if you have an idea or if you want to do the how of it a certain way or whatever, like rock on, like we fully support that. But in terms of like, like we want this going out, like we definitely try to be specific. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay. So, oh yeah. So I was talking about like plan for how I'm going to feel. And then, um, the last thing I want to say about that is like, almost like what we were talking about when Maggie used her example too, I think is that, um, I feel like the, <laughs> this like misnomer in our industry, which is like, you should always be trying to like work less, make more work less, make more work. Like that is like the Holy grail shit. I think that gets positioned in our industry. And what I have found is it's really hard to do both of those things at the exact same time. Like I know for sure, for sure next year in Q1, I'm going to be working more. I want to build a thing. I want to do a thing. I have ideas that I'm ready to bring to life. That just comes with the fucking territory to a certain extent. And then I know in Q2, I'm not. Like, so I think like just permission for that, or there have been year, a year where I worked a lot more in my business. And then I've had a year where I worked a lot less and vice versa. But like, I think where a lot of us get ourselves stuck, just like that wanting to feel every feeling from the business is wanting to do the like work less, make more constantly instead of like, sometimes we have to calibrate. Like I might work more to get something built and then, you know, come back down and work less once it's built or I might work more to like get a certain thing off the ground and then level out but I just see so many people trap themselves when they're trying to do both at the same time um and same with your team like we Megan you can speak to this but it's like team hours will go up when we're trying to put something new into place, whatever. And then we like systematize that level out. They'll go up when we're trying to do something else, systematize level out. But when you're like, hey team, how can you work less for me while also making sure we get all these projects off the ground? Like it, you would, like, it doesn't make sense. And then same for you. How can I like create this new thing I wanna create and do all this stuff and work a shit ton less? Like it's just really hard to hit both of those without like, I mean, certainly you could if you're making trade-offs of like, okay, then I'm going to let go of three clients or whatever. No clients freak out. I'm not doing that. I'm just using that as an example. Um, but right, do you know what I mean there? Yeah, I think it's like, there's always going to be uh, like, 
you're going to have to put more energy into things a lot in like at first yep. mm -hmm. to let them become to work for you and like I think about it in like a system so like when you're setting up a new system or like creating a new system you usually have to put in work up front to create it to set up the process to like automate things and whatever and make it like actually do kind of the setup and then it will start working for you so that you can work less and and it will start to automate afterwards yeah. and it's kind of the same with like you know, from the creative aspect of like working more to create a new thing, to build it out, to, you know, to be in that kind of like growth stage. And then when you pull back and, and are working less, you might still be making more, but it's because of the energy and effort that you put in the three months prior or whatever, yeah. however. Yep. Right. A hundred percent. And I think that's just so helpful to pay attention to in your own business, because again, like so much of this is like, how are you solving the right problems and how are you not making yourself wrong on all the other stuff? You know what I mean? Like that, that's always such a key to planning. Um, Sherry says, Ooh, do you have a practice for helping you reel in all the ideas that are not on the top three lists, like an ideas notebook or something more fun than that? Totally. I'll share what I have. And then I'm sure Megan has something too, because she's really good at being like, remember you had this idea a while ago. Um, I have a Trello board. Every time I say I have a Trello board, Megan just like silently giggles to herself. Um, I just don't know these things. I don't know. <laughs> um, I have a Trello board that's like my brain dump board, um, which is, it's just like all these ideas that I have kind of, and like, mo I'll be honest with you, I'll put some shit on there. And most of the time I come back and I'm like, I don't remember what that meant or that was actually a terrible idea, but it feels so good for me to get it out of my brain. Um, and on the Trello board, I have a, um, like a, the first board is like top three or whatever. And so it's like focal, like those focal points. And I won't put anything else on there until those are done. Um, I used to have a whiteboard here too that I would write it on. So it would like literally be in front of me and I could see it. But then I found this piece of art I really liked. So it's not there anymore. <laughs> Just being transparent. Um, but the, the whiteboard helped too because um, it would literally say areas of focus and I would just have those things to look at. But like for me, the brain dump thing is really helpful because it just gets it out of my head. Um, and I think I've said this a lot, but I'll say it again. I've had like five really great ideas the whole time I've been in business. Like great as in like, they really became a thing. They really took off. They really had wings. Like, you know what I mean? Like value centered sales, partnership, things like that. So having a place to park other things and then revisit and be like, is that actually a good idea? Once I revisit it is really useful, but I typically know, like I had an idea recently and I said to Megan, like, oh, like this, but like, this is the idea. And she was like, yes, that is the idea. And so typically I know if I'm like not feeling passionate enough about it, that I'm fine putting it on a board. I don't know. We'll see. Right. But usually like, I know if it's a thing, like my gut is like, yes. Um, so anyway, that's kind of, and then I'm sure you have a way that you kind of think about that, Megan. Um, I mean, I think that because a lot of times you'll randomly say things to me, pop something in base camp yeah. or say something on a call or be like, hey, I want to circle back up, back around to this or there's something there. This isn't quite it or something. So I just have like basically a running list of talking points and yeah. so any ideas that you come up with or whatever that we want to talk through. I just add it to my list and I add kind of like some context around it or any of my own thoughts around it or something like that. Yeah. And then whenever we have our team meetings, I just go through that list and see like, is there anything that feels like, let's circle back to this. Let's bring this up. Like, Hey, you mentioned to me three weeks ago that you had this idea around blah, blah, blah. And most of the time you're like, eh, I don't really, yeah. meh or whatever. Right. So I think that it's just like, yeah. I mean, I just kind of, Add it to a list. Basically. I would also say like having a good thought partner to filter that through is really helpful. Like whether that's a coach or your COO or whatever, like I also can tell, I mean, cause Megan knows my business really well, or like when my clients do this to me, like I know their business 
um, so well. And so it's like, I could tell when she, like this one thing I told her recently, she was like, yes. A lot of other things she was like, yeah, cool. We'll add it to the list. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I do kind of filter for it sometimes. Yeah. I feel like uh, there was, there have been a couple of things recently that I'll be like, oh, we'll, we'll circle back to this one. <laughs> Totally. But the one that, that we talked about recently was like, I could even feel like, oh, yeah. that makes a lot of sense. It checks a lot of boxes of things that we want to do just as, as like goals and planning for 2021, mm -hmm. but also just like general, um, like intentions and values in the business. Right. And like what, like what messaging we want to make sure that we're sharing and content concepts that we want to share and stuff like that ways that we want to connect like all of that and so it it fit a lot of different aspects and so because I know the business so well and because I know you so well like it was very easy for me to be like yes that's a, that's a great idea type of thing totally um okay last thing because I feel like this is where people get tripped up a little bit is this idea of like like how to plan and how to be adaptable because I feel like you know 2020 almost screws with everyone on that oh wait sherry says love that you guys are speaking to this this is a thousand percent true for my clients when we were running their first launch or creating a membership website course etc the first round is an investment but then you get a lovely return afterwards a hundred percent exactly um okay so here's how we kind of um leave room let's say it, it definitely is that thing about being reasonable that we talked about before but it's also like planning enough in advance so we can start executing early. So we have an idea what's happening for 2021. We have a very clear plan, like week by week of what's happening through March, through the end of March. And so that helps us like see the vision and where we're going. But I think people swing one way or the other sometimes where it's like, they're so adaptable that it's like hard to see what's coming up. And so everything feels reactive and last minute, or they're so planned that they'll try to like get the whole of 2020 locked in. And it's like, I can feel pretty reasonable about now to March and then we'll see like some of the things we want to see, like, how did that go? What's the data? Like what? Right. And that's where, like, I think sometimes planning for the whole year can trip you up is like, it's fine as long as you're willing to throw the plan away. <laughs> but if you make a whole really specific plan and data that happens in March suggests you do something different, you have to be willing to toss the plan, <laughs> right? And so for us, it makes a lot of sense to kind of go on that like, you know, like three to four month kind of planning route because it's enough time for us to start executing and getting things done but it also gives us a lot of leeway and space to see like, how did that thing go? <laughs> like, what, like, was that working for us? What did we learn from that? That kind of thing. Um, like when we launched, literally, that's kind of was it. It was like, I think we launched it in March. So we had planned like through then. And then it was like, okay, we think we're going here next. Roughly, we'll see. And so um, that's just kind of my take on that is like, be willing to throw away the plan or just plan like a little shorter term in terms of specifics with a longer term vision. I don't know what you think about that, Megan. Totally. I think it's super helpful to have like at least three to four months yeah. from like the team perspective, three to four months is like very, very good and helpful because even if it, even if the three to four months is kind of a loose plan, but you just have yeah. one to two months specifically mapped out or something like that like having both is really important because I feel like I mean just even with team hours and and their capacity and stuff like I know that like okay January and February are going to be very busy months for me so I know that I mean not that I'd be taking a vacation at that point but I know that I shouldn't take a plan like plan a vacation during those months or so you know what I mean we're like yeah. I think that it can just be really helpful for a team to have like ideas of expectations yeah. on things like that. But then it also helps with like uh, actually uh, executing things and like planning ahead and, and working ahead so that things aren't just rushed in last minute and stuff like that. You can kind of like, you know, work, uh, you know, 
in a little bit more of like a reasonable timeline and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I, I think that like, I have clients that, and you and I have done this before, where like we've mapped out like an entire year of just like general themes for different <laughs> months, you know, like, oh, I don't even know, but like whatever, this month is going to yeah. be the podcast launch or something like that. And so I think that can be really good, but like, we don't need to plan out like the exact dates and the exact, you know, how that's going to happen and all of that, because that the specifics might change by the time we get to September or whatever it is. Right. Totally. And I think like, you know, just, just being able to like have the plan where you know where you're going and you have like the first bit of direction, but then you're willing to like see where the trail takes you, so to speak, is really helpful because think of anything we've learned this year, like shit changes fast. And so like, you know, why spend months planning a thing that's probably going to change? And also we like to adapt based on what's working, which is something that you guys uh, learned from us today. Hey, Laura. Okay. So let me just like recap these. Um, and then we will stop because it's been like a freaking hour. Um, plan your goals around solving for problems. Like, do you know what the problems are in your business? And are you making plans and goals based on that versus goals that are just kind of like arbitrary? Think about what's actually reasonable, even if that's challenging. Um, in terms of not like what goal you're setting, but like what plan you're making to hit it is how I would say that. Like, we're not like be reasonable, set reasonable goals, but we are saying like set reasonable timelines and things like that. So you're not constantly in stress mode in your business. Um, ask yourself what's working and like throw fuel on that fire instead of just like always being on to the next. That filter of like what's simplest here is everything. Um, look at income or look at ex like expenditure versus income when you're making some of these choices because it's almost too easy to get caught up in a good idea instead of thinking about like the actual profit margin ramifications of that um think about how you want to feel each month and don't put the pressure to feel all the things or work less make more all at the same time like there are seasons there are months there are times like let yourself flow into that and then leave room for adapting. So if you're planning a year, like have the vision, but like you may only get really specific three to four months out so that you still have adaptability. You can still go based on data, all of the things that are really, really useful to success. I think that's it. You got anything else? Yeah. There? I think that's good. Do you want to tell the people where they can find you or get something from you? Sure. So whitespace.team is my website. It is new within the past month and I love it. And it's it is the best website ever, by the I way. We have so happy. redesigned mine. And I saw Megan's after and I was like, just kidding. I want that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I love my website. Oh, it's so good. Oh, it's so good. I'm so happy with it. Um, but yeah, so whitespace.team and I am, I have templates of trainings on there. I have a how to uh, hire with ease training, which is super helpful that just kind of shares my my process for how I hire, how I, I find team members um, to hire and what that process looks like. Um, and then I also have a streamline your content system training on there that just shares mostly like having a content inventory, having all your content in one place, and then how to use that to plan out your content um, and I'll be creating more. So if anybody has uh, templates or systems or anything like that, questions or anything that they're like looking for or wanting, email me, let me know. And I Seriously, will- Megan loves it, does love a specific question. I like, too love it. If you're like, specifically, <laughs> I would love for you to create a template on X. She'll be like, got it. Mm. Done. <laughs> So good. And also remember to do the holiday giveaway. They're pinned. Yes. There's three so far that you can watch. So make sure like the, the top pinned one is like our third, but make sure to go back to on the other two. Um, they're also as marked as announcements and comment on this as well. Last one Beautiful. releases on Friday. It's the biggest one. It's very exciting. It's so exciting. Um, okay. I love you. Thank you for being here, Megan. You're Thank you. All right, bye guys. Thanks so much. Bye guys.